So recently, Shanks has been one of the more popular characters. Well, he's always been popular, but I'm talking recently, he told his vice captain, Ben Beckman, that he wants to go claim the Wumpies. And we never knew he had this ambition because we're like, why didn't you do this earlier, Shanks? You're a monster. Then, of course, recently, we also saw his Wi-Fi hockey. Yes, this is a new type of hockey where he doesn't have to be on the island. Just on a ship outside of Wano, was able to neutralize not any character, an admiral. The admirals are the top of the top of the Marines in Greenbow. This is the same group, Greenbow, that was neutralized utilizing a king and queen though they were injured you still got to give respect for green bow for taking on those beast pirates and king and queen then of course you also have the red scabbers he took on all the red scabbers yes they were injured as well but i'm still like it's not a 1v1 injured person it's like 1v multiple fighters then also taking an advanced conqueror's hockey coded attack from yamato and we know how powerful yamato is like yamato arguably could have been the second to third strongest character on the stride pirates if she joined and then of course there's dragon Momonosuke, yes, that dragon mythical zone, like, it was pretty much is Kaido's Delph. Momonosuke has Kaido's Delph ability. Yes, Momonosuke is not a fighter like Kaido, but still, the fire attack that's obviously a weakness to the forest. So, Shank stopping him was the perfect moment, especially because Oda has, knowing this Yonko vs. Admiral debate has been going on ever since Marine Ford War. And you have to understand, even though we never see Shanks in the One Piece story, sometimes it feels like he's the main character. Let me explain. I know how weird that sounds. From the first First ever chapter highlighting him having the Nika Nika no Mi to him losing an arm for Monkey D. Luffy, the actual main character, and giving Luffy his iconic straw hat that's been pretty much his trademark throughout the whole story. To him, of course, being on the Pirate King's crew, and we know Goldie Roger is a staple for the One Piece story, and then also him being connected to the Celestial Dragons, the ultimate enemies, the Celestial Dragons, and of course, the leader of the Holy Knights. Figaland Garling, we know that Shanks probably is a son of Figaland Garling, but although it isn't, there isn't confirmation yet. And this character, Figaland Garling, can kill other Celestial Dragons, guys. So, definitely makes us sting. And it makes it also clear of the meeting of the Gorsei. When Shanks was able to meet the Gorsei, we were all like, what the hell is Shanks doing? But now we understand because of the whole connection to Figaland Garling. Then, of course, we also have the powerless build up to of course hockey through shanks showing him use congress hockey on white Bear ship knocking out those fodders to even going deep, deeper in the past when he used congress hockey on the scene king in the first ever chapter shanks was the staple hockey not roger not luffy it was shanks who was the pretty much the face of hockey and then of course he goes on to clash with the world's strongest man that fought a prime roger in a conquest hockey clash like this is all happening pre time sweep guys then of course him stopping a kind during the marine full roar and a kind was running through a lot of people guys like the feast then marco used a hockey attack on him and he pretty much didn't sweat it and then of course you see shanks use his sword and stop a kind that was a big deal guys honestly and let's be honest here the fact that blackbeard also backed out blackbeard just got wiped for zelfer ability and was going against in goku and garp and he wanted to take down all the marine for war he had no fear a kind was there aokiji was there kizaru there he had no fear but Shanks comes with this crew. Yeah, it's, not, it's too early for the fight, you guys, right now. That says a lot about Shanks' is power. And then, of course, post time skip, when Luffy knocks out 50,000 fishmen, Oda comes out of nowhere and says, Yeah, Shanks would have knocked out all 100,000. Or when we see Luffy, one of his greatest fights, I think it's top three Luffy fights, Katakuri versus Luffy. And the whole fight is pretty much future side training. And Katakuri's amazing future side versus Snake Man. Yeah, there's also Kaido with Advanced Conqueror's Hockey versus Gear Faith Luffy Advanced Conqueror's Hockey and how that was the staple of that fight in Wano. And then we see Shanks versus Kid where his future sight is actually longer than Katakuri's. He has better future sight than Katakuri to see that deep into the future. And then, of course, his Divine Departure attack was like one of the strongest Advanced Conqueror's Hockey attack I have ever seen in the story. Like, it was a Pirate King level attack. Divine Departure is Goldie Rogers' attack that knocked out a post Wano Kid and killer now you have to understand kid and killer were pretty durable during wano they took a lot of attacks but post wano they got a power buff so for them to get knocked out by one attack from shanks says everything so if you guys like honestly i wouldn't be surprised if you guys thought he's top one and blackbeard versus shanks is probably gonna change the game again because blackbeard's gonna do some crazy delphi stuff and shanks is gonna do some crazy hockey stuff and it's gonna be even a deeper bit debate than yonko versus admiral the debate of hockey versus delphi but today after the last couple episodes, I have to give Shanks his flower. Now, when it comes to the sources outside the manga, we know that Shanks has a sword called the Griffin. And that's a big deal because the fact that Shanks' sword has a name, we know that he has swordsmanship skills. So that's one of the main factors in Shanks' combat ability. We also learned that he has 
pretty much an ability to kill Observation Hockey, especially Future Sight. They call him the Observation Hockey Killer from his Conqueror's Hockey at that, which is insane. The fact that it comes from his Conqueror's Hockey, he can nullify other people's Observation Hockey, was a big reveal in the story. Then there's also Film Red, where we saw cool scenes of Shanks, of course, Speed Blitz and Kizaru, and that scene was crazy because he was actually blocking multiple Kizaru attacks and then Speed Blitz and would put a sword in his neck, and showcases are some cool hockey moments in the movie overall, which I feel like it's not canon material, but Oda has an influence on Film Red, so you have to think about it, especially with someone limited in combat like Shanks. Shanks debut in the series, we see him save Luffy and become the first ever hockey user officially in the One Piece story. Now many people harp on him losing an arm, of course, as Luffy in the same exact chapter one shots that sea monster but Shanks lost an arm which doesn't make sense if I'm being completely honest. This is even later mentioned by Whitebeard how surprised everyone was when Shanks came back with one arm and he said like what enemy did you give it to and Shanks was saying yeah I gave it to the next era pretty much implying that he gave his arm on purpose now I don't want to bring speculation to this video because I don't like speculating on power scaling just understand Shanks should have never lost his arm in that first chapter and power scaling wise especially after everything we have seen in the series it just doesn't make sense now the next time we see him is where it gets even more controversial Hawkeye yeah Draco Mihawk the world's greatest swordsman says he wants no part in fighting Shanks because Shanks lost an arm and this is the beginning of pretty much the Mihawk and Shanks debate that took over the community. Now I see this in three different ways. One way I used to always see it was a lose-lose situation for the world's greatest swordsman. If he does challenge Shanks and win, he beat a one-armed man. And if he loses, he lost to Shanks with one arm. Kind of reminds me of a guy fighting a girl. You win, you beat up a girl. You lose, you got beat up by a girl. It just doesn't look right. Number two, maybe Miyak is just stronger than Shanks since he lost an arm uh, and was going at it with Shanks when Shanks had two arms. Which, honestly, I think that's probably the least possible scenario, but it definitely is something you just have to think about because of the implications in the story. And then there's three, which is to me the most likely reason. Shanks was probably winning before he lost an arm because why would Mihawk, in a sense, pretty much go after and challenge a guy that he was beating. You don't challenge people you're beating. Uh, it's like, honestly, when Luffy was challenging Kaido and sur trying to surpass Kaido, he lost to him before and got one shot in his gear fourth form. It even says in Mihawk's Viva card that he's looking for someone to surpass his ex-rival, Shanks. But honestly, let's continue because those are just small controversial moments that were really early in the series. We didn't even reach the grand line. Now, the next time we see Shanks, he's hockeyed up again. But this time, full force. As Jozu, the third division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, says without no determination, you can stand in front of this man. And amazing hockey as always. Makes sense as he's the only Yonko to have no dub for ability. So for him to have an emphasis on hockey actually does make sense story-wise. Anyways, this leads to Shanks clashing with Whitebeard and them splitting the skies or the heavens. Which of course, Jozu again comments on. On that so it definitely looks like Jozu was the commentator in this clash between Whitebeard and Shanks the Yonkos and honestly was a really good showing for Shanks when it comes to his power and ability the fact that he's the world's strongest man is clashing with you and you're splitting the skies that moment Shanks became minimum top 10 in the story of course the reason they were actually clashing was Marshall D Teach Shanks mentioning Teach scarring him and this was before that Blackbeard had the yami yami no me, and Shanks said he wasn't being careless. Really does make you think. Mm. Really makes you think. Like, yeah, you just clashed with the world's strongest man, Whitebeard, but also you got scarred by his pretty much pirate member that wasn't a division commander in Blackbeard. And he's trying to emphasize to Whitebeard that Blackbeard is stronger than you think. He's more powerful than you think. He was just hiding. Now, my opinion on this, we all saw the Blackbeard ace fight where... Just his raw strength was almost able to break Ace's neck. So I think Blackbeard has always been a strong character. Yes, he has bad moments, but honestly, I think without the double abilities, Blackbeard is still pretty powerful. And also, we don't know the timeline of which Shanks and Blackbeard went at it. Shanks also fought Kaido in the New World because Kaido was after his former Rocks Pirate crew member, Whitebeard. To put it into context, this is how most people ended up after fighting Kaido. Before the rooftop, Moria destroyed his whole crew dead. Eustace Kid, yeah, destroyed. His vice captain eats a smile fruit. Luffy, destroyed, gets sent to prison of Udon. So yeah, Shanks fighting Kaido in the New World before Marine Ford 
and coming there untouched is insane. Speaking of the Ark Marine 4, Shanks was able to stop Akainu from killing Kobe, and that says something as Akainu killed Ace took off half of Whitebeard's head, scarred Monkey D. Luffy while putting a hole in his top young commander Jinbei, and pretty much fought every Yonko division commander on the Whitebeard Pirates, plus Crocodile, the incredible low gear user. And of course, RIP the 10th division commander Kurio, we saw a lot of casualties by Akainu. He was a menace and Shanks stopped him. We also had Blackbeard fresh off of taking Whitebeard's Delford ability and trying to destroy Marine Ford while clashing with the mythical Zoan Sengoku and Marine Legend Fleet Admiral and says nah to fighting Red Hair. Honestly, what can I say? Shanks' clout was definitely risen after Marine Ford. Another thing we can look at is the fact that Shanks took Eustace Kid's arm off. And if Shanks didn't do it, one of his crew members did it. So the fact that he, one of his lower pirate crew members, not himself doing it, which says a lot as Eustace Kid injured a sweet commander and took, of course, the role of Ponica from Big Mom. And of course, he was awakened going into Wano while being a Conqueror's Hockey user. Definitely says a lot about Kid in his power. The fact that he lost an arm to the Red Air Pirates, regardless if it was Shanks or not, does make Shanks look good. Now, Shanks is bound. Yes, Shanks has a 4 billion berry bounty, and though it was lower than Kaido and Big Mom's, he is the newest Yonko pre time skip, uh, so it makes sense for him to have the lowest bounty. And he got the position after losing his arm, which definitely is a bonus for me. So, honestly, cool stuff right here. We even have to talk about Kaido showing Shanks respect in chapter 1001, was a, also a true testament to Shanks' power, as he was the only living person he compared to Luffy when getting hit by that red rock advanced armor. Haki 2 moment. Now, some people might say, Where's Garp? He who took out rocks. Well, it was only pirates up there, so that's what I'm thinking. Then that leaves the question of where's Big Mom? But she's on his side on the rooftop, and it looks like they were never seriously fighting before or going all out like these other characters that he fought properly so definitely want to say and they go back all with the rock the rock stays we saw a big mom and kaido's connection the rock stays wasn't never really a i fight you you fight me moment thing now i honestly think this is probably shanks's greatest feat post time skip him versus green bull the newest admiral this logia force force human like honestly, this is probably the greatest feat shown by a Yonko, surpassing Whitebeard's rage versus Akainu during Marine Ford and Kaido one-shotting Gear Fourth Luffy, as Shanks was not even on the island and he was able to communicate and freeze Green Bull with his Conqueror's Haki, which is mind-blowing because Green Bull was draining King and Queen and fighting the Red Scabbards in Yamato. Honestly, really cool stuff from Shanks. And people are actually looking at Green Bull lesser, but maybe you should not be looking at Green Bull lesser and Shanks higher after this moment. Now, of course, we recently got revealed Mihawk's bounty, and he was said to have greater skills in swordsmanship than Shanks. But this was something we already knew, as Mihawk is the world's greatest swordsman. I don't think it confirms Shanks is weaker than the world's greatest swordsman. I just think Shanks is less skill in swordsmanship than the world's greatest swordsman which is redundant so now it's time to answer the question how strong is shanks he is a human with incredible willpower and he is what kaido speaks about to luffy when it comes to roger dominating becoming pirate king with just hockey and no delver ability and he is the strongest yonko who will go up against the future strongest yonko blackbeard to compare him to other characters he's weaker than of course prime roger and prime whitebeard and that's about it. I honestly believe Shanks is slightly above Kaido, Big Mom, Mihawk, and still Luffy. Yes, these characters are the top 10 strongest characters, but Shanks, I think, is slightly above all these characters just from what we've seen combat-wise. And of course, we're probably going to see more in the future as he's going for the One Piece. You saw him talk to Ben Beckman, guys. So that's my thoughts on Shanks power scaling. Peace out. So to end up this video, I want to say it best, yo. Kaido said it best, actually not me personally. He said that Roger dominated with no devil ability. He brought the world to his heel with just hockey. And it makes me think of the current Shanks fighting style. Like, he stopped a 3 billion berry man who was awakened, Delphi user, which is advanced types of hockey with Future Sight and Conqueror's Coding. And then looking at Kuzar versus Luffy, and this fight I think really made me look at Shanks different because we had Gear Fifth Luffy and he had one attack one attack where, where he pretty much made kizaru see stars with his advanced conquerors coding uh punch from gear Fit luffy and honestly 
if Luffy didn't get knocked out as well, this could have been a better feat than Shanks versus Kid and Killer, because this is an Admiral for goodness sakes. Yes, I think Kid is close to the Admiral level, but he's not Admiral level. And Kizaru is literally not, he's not even, he's not even Green Bull for the tour Admiral level. He's top of the top Admiral level, in my personal opinion. We've never seen this guy get damaged, <laughs> honestly. So to see Luffy actually knock him out with one punch, that is crazy. And it, but it also makes me think Shanks is the strongest in the One Piece story, because I think Shanks would have done that more attacks than Luffy, but I don't think he would have ran out because he's a hockey user. He's not a Delphi user, especially Luffy using Gear 5th and he hasn't mastered. But I think Luffy masters Gear 5th. He will be the strongest character in the One Piece story. And prom his promise to Shanks will be, of course, fulfilled at you know, the beginning chapter, his promise. But right now, after all we've seen, the Luffy-Gazaro fight was the last straw, guys. Shanks is the strongest in One Piece to me.